What's up everybody, it's Dan the Bugman, finally back with another bug video, and today I'm going to be answering one simple question, and that is, where do bugs go in the winter time? It is currently winter time where I am here in Kentucky, and I'm going to be showing you exactly where they go in the winter time, and how they survive the winter, and no, they don't all just die and then magically reappear. There are very unique things that bugs do in the winter time. I'm gonna be showing you quickly what they do, and I'm gonna be finding some actual bugs that are doing this. And when I say bugs, uh, I know there is a difference between arachnids and insects and arthropods, uh, like centipedes and spiders and ants. I know they're all different, but I'm just gonna say bugs. They all do the same thing to get through the winter, and that is what we call overwintering. It is similar to hibernating, but they have some different techniques as opposed to hibernating. So I'm going to get into that in a little bit more detail and then I'm going to go find some bugs that are overwintering and show you what they look like. Bugs survive the winter in three main ways. All right, and we're going to break each of these down really quick, okay? The first way they survive the winter is to migrate. Like a lot of birds do, insects are able to fly as well. A prime example of this is the monarch butterfly. So to avoid dying in the winter, they simply just leave. They fly south, they fly to Central America, South America, at least in this part of the world, they fly down there and they spend the winter where it's warm and then they just fly back up, right? So migration is the number one, uh, very simple to understand. And the second two are very closely related. I'm going to explain these next two together. So the next two options are to avoid freezing through the winter and the next option is to embrace the freezing and actually the insect freezes itself and survives the winter while it's frozen. The first one is what you and I are going to be finding outside today. We're going to find insects that are avoiding freezing temperatures, but they're not dead. They're just right above freezing, where they don't freeze to death. They just survive the winter almost frozen, but they're just inactive, they're overwintering. And there are special insects. There's not a ton of those around here that I know of. They, are, they would be harder to find, so we're not gonna find any today, but there are insects that freeze during the winter. Their bodies have unique chemicals inside their blood and inside their cells that allow them to freeze without the cells actually bursting, right? Normally when something freezes, it expands and the cells burst. That's why animals cannot survive the winter because their cells explode. That's when you get frostbite and the tips of your fingers turn purple. That means all the cells are dead. They've, they've exploded because they've gotten too big for the cell membrane to hold and they just explode. And this overwintering, it is quite different from hibernating. When animals hibernate, like mammals, bears hibernate, they, they actually keep their body temperature warm enough to sustain normal functions. So it's closer to sleeping. Hibernating is closer to sleeping than overwintering is. A whole change of state for these bugs. They don't move hardly at all. They just sit there. They're body almost shuts off completely, but they are able to survive the winter. That's pretty cool to think about. Insects and mammals, they're widely different, but without further ado, let's go out and find some insects that are overwintering. These bugs that we find are going to be doing freeze avoidance. That means they're not actually frozen. They have found a place that keeps them right above freezing for the entire winter. And some bugs, unfortunately, do not do this well, and they do freeze to death and die but the majority of insects that do freeze avoidance make it into the springtime, and that's when they come out and resume normal activities. I'm gonna go get some clothes on, and we're gonna go find some insects that are just chilling outside. I'll show you guys the temperature, but it's very cold currently, or right now. Uh, it's been snowing today, so let's go do that, and I'll be right back. Okay guys, we are here in my beautiful backyard. It is January 16th, something like that. It's cold outside, and just to prove it to you, uh, this, that's ice, okay, ice, right? So it's cold, um, it's at least 32 degrees, um, that's how that works. And a lot of bugs do this by entering into areas that are protected from the temperature change, okay? A lot of times in the natural environment, this is inside a pile of leaves, um, under the ground is a very common area to go for bugs, but unfortunately for homeowners, that can be inside of your house. So a lot of times when people call us in the winter time, they are having trouble with bugs getting into their house because they are trying to avoid the freezing temperatures. And that, 
That makes sense to me. If I was a bug, I would try to get into a house as well. So I'm not gonna take the easy route here and look in my house or like in the crawl space for these bugs. I'm going to try and find bugs that are overwintering in a natural environment, not a man-made environment. To do this, the first place I'm going to look is slightly below the ground level. So a lot of bugs bury under the ground, okay? So I've got, I guess this is kind of man-made, but there's these pavers around my landscaping here. And don't ask me why there's all these packing peanuts here. They just blew in the other day. I have no idea. I'm going to check under these stones and see if I can find some, some bugs overwintering. So I'm just gonna set you down for a second and watch me do this. Okay, here we go. I've got my bare hands, so uh, hopefully it doesn't get too cold, but we're gonna try to find a bug under these bricks, yeah. Uh, yes, guys, it is currently snowing and I'm out here trying to find an overwintering bug for you. So if you will, please smash the like button. I would appreciate it. It helps me out a ton. All right, um, I will continue looking until I find one. I haven't found one yet. I just checked on those rocks, stones over there. Didn't have any luck. Um, but I've got some other places in mind. I will let you know as soon as I find one. Okay, well, that took longer uh, than I thought it would, which is normal with all of these videos. Uh, I did end up finding a pest that was overwintering. Now, just a quick reminder, overwintering simply means just surviving through the winter, okay? Uh, earlier, I was looking under those stones. I did not find any under the stones. It's been colder than average the last few weeks here, 30s, 20s, even the teens every day so uh, I suspect any of those bugs that were surviving in the ground have gone deeper than just a couple inches and I didn't do a ton of digging. I ended up having to go into my crawl space to find this house centipede. That is the common term for them. Um, a house centipede that was spending the winter time um, under my house. Which brings up the interesting question, are humans creating more environments for pests and therefore creating higher pest populations? In a lot of cases, I think this may be true, especially with the way some people live. Um, people are dirty, people leave their landscaping filthy, their kitchens filthy, um, and perfect environments for centipedes to live throughout the winter, which in turn causes more of these animals to be close to your house, right? So there are a lot of things to do to get rid of pests, but humans are not very good at doing that naturally. And I think that really just has something to say about how humans and pests are similar. We both need, you know, food, water, and shelter to survive the winter time. And when we create that environment for ourselves, it creates the environment um, in turn for bugs like this house centipede and other spiders. And we get a lot of mice calls this time of year, other pests like that. I hope that answers your question as to where pests go, where bugs go in the winter time. Uh, just a quick recap, they migrate, they say, see you later, I'm out of here. So they avoid the freezing temperatures without traveling, which means they just simply, man, this guy is going. So they avoid the freezing temperatures without traveling. They stay in areas that are close, close by, like under my house, or they are able to sustain the winter through releasing chemicals in their body that keeps them alive while being frozen. Those are the three main ways pests survive the winter. Uh, one more quick bonus way, as I was looking under some of those rocks, I noticed a bunch of eggs. Um, some kind of insect had put these eggs under these rocks, and a lot of adult forms of insects are not able to survive freezing temperatures, but their eggs are. So at the end of the season, they lay their eggs, and they survive through the winter, and in the springtime, they hatch out, and that is their you know one-year life cycle, and that's how they survive the winter. So I hope you guys like this video. That is where bugs go in the winter time. They don't just magically disappear. They have very unique strategies to make it through the cold temperatures. Uh, so thank you for watching. Until next time, peace.